So it is day four at the Winter Olympics, and uh, for the next two weeks, all eyes will be on the frozen Russian ski resort of Sochi. Not only is the Olympics one of the most prestigious sporting events for the athletes, it's also one of the most valuable sporting events in history in more than one sense. Now, since the LA Games of 1984, it has become evident that the symbolic Olympic rings have become a money churning monster that just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and Sochi 2014 will be no different. For more on the companies using the event as a multinational marketing platform, we're joined live in the studio by Dr. Kim Byung Ju, the head of KLMP Consulting, and of course, our regular commentator on this program. Good afternoon to you, Dr. Kim. Good afternoon. No, so uh, it's uh, it's been a known news that corporates use this opportunity to as a marketing platform, mm -hmm. and uh, we know that uh, global companies really take uh, the, this Olympic Games as a as a really the good stake, right. especially this Winter Olympics, what are they looking at? Well, basically, you know, they're looking at two things. Uh, first of all, the local market of the hosting country itself. We're talking about 143 million people of the uh, of this country, Russia itself, and the uh, uh, overall their GDP is about two trillion uh, U.S. dollars, slightly below that. That's uh, not a small market at all. Actually, uh, they are talking about the potential. Uh, market potentials itself, Russia uh, stands somewhere around like uh, num number seventh in the world after the United States, uh, China, India, and so on. So this is a very important market that these global companies are having their eyes on. Plus, of course, the second aspect of this is the global market itself. It's, uh, they're talking about about uh, one billion uh, people all around the world actually watching the games this time. And so that's not a small number at all. And uh, those companies that have their market outreach all around the world, uh, uh, for them, it's a very important occasion. And uh, this is a kind of like a condensed opportunity to uh, improve uh, or enhance their global image around the world for those people who are watching these games. And with this extended period of time of uh, game being played out from February 7th until uh, 23rd, this is like continuously, uh, you know, extended uh, coverage where they can get their, uh, you know, images being broadcasted through the TVs and so on. So, very important opportunity, and especially for those top 10 official uh, sponsors, uh, offic official partners for the corporate games. Corporate partners. Yeah, corporate partners. It's very important. Right. I mean, uh, this is just constant exposure to to people all across the globe, so mm -hmm. this must be a golden opportunity for right, them. Right. Now, as for the official corporate partner that you just mentioned, mm -hmm. what, are, what are the qualifications a company needs to become a part of them? There are 10 of them, indeed, wow. and to be selected as one of the top 10s, uh, the, these corporations will have to pay 100 million U.S. dollars to the IOC, International o uh, Olympics Committee, and uh, plus, on top of that 100 million uh, U.S. dollars, usually we purchase saying they'll have to spend at least another 100 million U.S. dollars to uh, offer support and uh, you know to, to do the, those things that are necessary to make them uh, you know rec recognizable as the official corporate uh, partners. So um, we're thinking that uh, a company normally would make more than $110 million <laughs> from this Olympics event, I, I would suppose. assume. Right, right. Now, um, so what are the extra kinds of support that the partners have to provide? Uh, lots of different things. They, they offer the supply for the games, uh, you know, the things that the athletes use, all the athletes use, their official supplier of these goods. But on top of, the, top of that, they offer extra things. For instance, P&G, Procter & Gamble have been offering um, extra supplies of daily necessities on top of the, uh, the common uh, you know, supplies that they need. And they all actually selected about 33 mothers uh, around the world to, uh, who have their children participating as athletes yeah. as their kind of like, uh, what do you call it, uh, the commercial models or whatever, and uh, speaking out uh, about the, the, the cause of the Olympi Olympics and so on. Very inventive and interesting idea there. And GE, of course, is apply, uh, supplying all these uh, extra equipments for health maintenance and all that. And, uh, you know, uh, plus they're uh, putting all these extra uh, facilities to show their presence, for instance. And the Dow Chemical uh, is the one that supplies all these chemical supplies that needs to be, uh, that, that are used to maintain the, the uh, ice links and all, all that kind of stuff. 
And there are lots of other things that's going on, and uh, you know, uh, different uh, companies are supplying different things. But Coca-Cola and McDonald's actually, uh, you know, to work on their image as an instant uh, food supplier, uh, they're making a big deal about the fact that they're supplying this important good food to the athletes. So that's a big cause for them as well. And there are others such as you know, good old names, uh, good old uh, Olympic names such as Omega Watch and. And others. I suppose uh, this could actually uh, change their image as um, you know, a healthy food or a healthy drink provider as you know, these athletes with good physique are eating up all these uh, McDonald's and drinking Coke. That's exactly the point about McDonald's and Coke in su uh, supporting these games. Now I heard uh, Samsung Electronics distributed their smartphones to all the athletes. Now, was it all of the athletes? Actually all of the athletes, all 3,000 of them. Wow. Regardless of uh, nationality here. And they're supplying uh, you know, Galaxy Note 3. Which is in Korean pricing, it's over a uh, hundred, uh, uh, one million won here in Korea. So right. it's very expensive. Right. So talking about you know having to supply, uh, having to spend uh, close to like hundred million dollar extra on top of the deployment to uh, IOC. I think Samsung is uh, spending a lot more in that regard. The thing is, Samsung uh, became the first official sc uh, sponsor. Uh, from I think 1998 Nagano uh, Winter Olympic Games. At that time, Samsung was below outside of the, the world's top 100 in terms of brand recognition, and now they're like world's uh, one of the top 10, uh, top ten, top eight. They are talking about. So this is a huge jump. I'm sure it's not only the Olympic sponsorship uh, that they owe to this kind of big jump there, mm -hmm. but it, uh, they're saying it's an important part right, of it. Right, it did play a big role. In right, that. so it's indeed uh, nothing that could be neglected there. The only thing is they really wanted to supply the uh, Galaxy Gear. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the, the tricky part was the uh, Omega Watch. Uh, the Galaxy Gear was viewed by the OECD, uh, the, by IOC, as a watch equipment rather right. than what Providing that Samsung, time. yeah, what, rather than what Samsung claims. So that had to be excluded. So that was a slight uh, disappointment for Samsung Electronics. Right. So because IOC had categorized Samsung as a provider of uh, mobile technology, as for Omega Watch was the provider of time. So I suppose that the crossing kind of conflicted there. Exactly. Now, uh, what about those uh, those who are not part of the official partners? I mean, mm -hmm. we have been getting reports about companies who are not part of this doing ambush marketing. Right. I'm sure they feel like outsiders, right? Well, right. Uh, they, they, they are, but they're doing all they can. Indeed. In marketing theory, in uh, being taught in business schools, ambush marketing is classified as marketing activities uh, through which these advertisers actually take advantage of uh, particular events without actually paying the official you know, sponsorship mm. fee there. So for that, uh, many of the Korean companies are actually trying a lot, uh, both in Sochi itself as well as uh, here in the home, uh, Korean home market itself. But the thing is, they have to play a very tight rope game here because they're not allowed to use uh, you know, the official uh, 2014 Sochi Olympic Games. So without using those names, they have to play interesting tricks uh, by, I don't know, showing the faces of the athletes, Korean athletes. Uh, trying to associate themselves with the game uh, in direct way, but still uh, promoting their image. So interesting uh, motions and strategies that are being uh, played out on TV and elsewhere here. Right, definitely the Olympics is more than a sporting event now Absolutely. with um, you know, the economic impact, political, diplomatic, you know, right. um, everything else being associated with this sporting event. Mm. And for money, this is a very important occasion. Definitely so. All mm. right, Dr. Kim Byung-ju, thank you so much for today, mm. and uh, we'll talk to you again. Okay, thank you.